Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week we'll look into working with AMA and RED as well as QuickTime files in Media Composer 5. As you probably know, the new version of Media Composer allows you to link to any R3D or QuickTime file and work natively with those files. So first let's link to a folder full of R3D files, go to File, Link to AMA Volume, go to the folder that your RTD files are in, and it will open in a bin. Now I can simply open one of those clips and just play it. As you can see, it's a little stuttery, it does not play back in real time. There's also a greenish uh, tint to the image. And you might want to change that. So right click on the master clip and choose set source settings. This will open this nice source settings window. We can change all the settings that you like from working with red files, the color space, gamma curve, color temperature, a tint, can easily make it look a little more neutral if you like. Can change the exposure and all these kinds of things. You can uh, change the debayer detail. Now this was already on low and it still didn't play in real time. So my uh, Computer is probably not beefy enough, but if you do have a fast enough computer, that is uh, a pretty nice way to work with them. Now you can directly edit them into a timeline and work with, with them. So if you don't have the performance to do that or you feel safer creating Avid media files, we'll do that in a minute before we do. Let's quickly use AMA to link to uh, a QuickTime file. You can go to File, Link to AMA Files. I'll open a Avid Screencast Capture thingy. Right, that we'll put into our, our its own bin. And this is actually a weird size. It's 1866 by 1050. So it's not a raster size that is generally, you know, supported by uh, any video standard. And it still works fine. And it just puts black bars around the image because it needs to fill the whole 1920 by 1080 screen. Now you may not want that. And that gets us to another great feature. If you open your hamburger menu, and go to choose columns. It's not called headings anymore. At first I was, you know, searching like crazy. I was thinking, where's the headings option? But it's called choose columns. Go to the reformat column and check that and say, okay. You'll see that column somewhere. There we go. Center keep size, it says right now. And if you hover above it, you see this little triangle. So click there and you have a different set of options where you can choose how to reformat the QuickTime file or, you know, works the same way with the R3Ds. I'll show you in a minute. So you can stretch. This works fine because my original QuickTime file is a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. If it was uh, in a weird aspect ratio or 4 by 3 or anything, you'd have weird distortion but this way it works fine. You can say center crop, which does the same. It would crop uh, the left and the right and center at everything. And you can also say letterbox. Well, again, it's, this is a 16 by nine frame. You know, there is no letterbox basically. So these uh, three basically do the same in this case but if this wasn't a 16 by 9 aspect ratio original file, you know, it, it would have very different options. I can show you with the red files that are actually 2 by 1. So I'll say stretch 
and it uh, magically fills the whole screen, which is great. Now you can just work with it like with any other 1920 by 1080 footage, except for maybe a couple of performance issues, you know, if it's, uh, if it's a weird format and, you know, it's taxing on your system. Let's go back to our red files where we have the same option. There is also the reformat column. Now again, let's open one of the red clips. Let's choose a couple of different options here. Could also use stretch. And as you can see now, there's weird geometric distortion because it just stretches the image to fill the whole screen. Letterbox shows you the two by one image in the 16 by nine frames, black bars on top and bottom. Center crop blows it up and crops the left and the right part of the image to make it fill the whole screen. And center keep size, centers the image and you know, keeps the size the way it was before. You can of course change that for all the clips at the same time. You can also do the same thing with uh, the red source settings. You can select all the clips and change them. And uh, you know, that's basically all there is to it. Now you can edit them into the timeline and just work away if you want to do that. But probably for performance or safety reasons, you will want to transcode to a DNX HD format. What you could of course do is just select all of the clips, right click, say tr consolidate transcode and transcode them to a format of your choice. But actually there's a lot of nice stuff you can do. For example, there's always the clapperboard here in the beginning and let's just say we've renamed the clip so that we actually don't need the clapperboard at the beginning and we want to save drive space or whatever. So what we could do is just go to the start of the action. If we are really sure we don't need the stuff before that, go to the end of the action. Mark out. Create a subclick by option or alt clicking on the image and dragging it to the bin creates a subclip and so we could create all those subclips and then only consolidate or transcode the subclips now before you do check your media creation settings by either going to tools media creation or hitting command or control 5 and go to the mix down and transcode settings and check what the R3D source quality debayer is. This will have great impact on the performance of the you know, time that you need to uh, transcode. And of course also on the quality. For offline purposes, probably quarter or half debayer is more than sufficient. But if you want to transcode at the best possible quality, you of course will have to go with full, but this will take a quite a long time. So check those settings. Also, there are render settings. If you work with, uh, with the AMA stuff, same thing here. If you render what uh, debayer quality will be used for that render. So I'll stick with half, good quality, and then just right click, go for consolidate transcode, and I'll transcode to DNX HD. 36 to the media drive. I don't need any handle length because, you know, I want to save time here. <laughs> Hit transcode. And there it is, it will transcode. So you can see it uses all cores, so, you know, this one works nicely. And the great thing about this is that you can now do everything within the Avid application. You don't need Metafuse, you don't need Red Cineax if you don't want to use it. Of course, while you're transcoding, you can't do anything with your editing application. And, you know, transcoding can take a very, very long time. So you might still want to opt for using Metafuse or Red Cineax to transcode the whole bunch because you can still use your editing application. 
All right, thanks for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you want to, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com where you can also watch past episodes and click on the subscribe in iTunes link if you like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, just drop me a line at mail at avidscreencast.com or uh, comment on the website or write me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast or on Facebook facebook.com slash avid screencast and if you want to know more about me check out editguy.de then again why would you <laughs> um, once again thanks for watching see you next time goodbye <laughs>